हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी फार्माकोलॉजी ऑफ सब्सटेंस पी ना मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फंक्शन ऑफ सब्सटेंस पी इज द परसेप्शन ऑफ पेन ना सब्सटेंस पी ट्रांसमिट्स पेन सिग्नल्स फ्रॉम द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड टू द ब्रेन वेयर पेन इज फेल्ट और एक्सपीरियंस्ड ना सब्सटेंस पी इज अ न्यूरो पेप्टाइड इट इज एन अनडेखा पेप्टाइड that means it is made up of 11 amino acids now substance p is a neuropeptide neuropeptides are similar to neurotransmitters so substance p is a neuropeptide it is released at the synapse and it binds to the postsynaptic receptors and produces the response now substance p is a member of टेकीकाइनन फैमिली ऑफ न्यूरोपेप्टाइड्स ना सब्सटेंस पी हैज हाई एफिनिटी फॉर न्यूरोकाइन वन रिसेप्टर्स एब्रीविएटेड एज एन के वन आर नाउ दीज न्यूरोकाइन वन रिसेप्टर्स दे आर फाउंड ऑन द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड देन दे आर फाउंड ऑन द एंडोथीलियम ऑफ द ब्लड वेसल्स वाइट ब्लड सेल्स न्यूरोन्स एंड मेनी अदर प्लेसेस now let's discuss the functions of substance p now the first and the most important function of substance p is the pain perception that is to feel pain or to experience pain now as we know that the pain can be produced throughout our body but it is felt in the brain so look at this figure it's a very beautiful diagram that depicts the role played by substance p in the perception of pain let's say a nail pricks so the pain is produced in the injured tissue now this pain signal it travels to the somatosensory cortex of the brain where the pain uh, where the feeling of pain is recognized or the pain is felt or the pain is perceived so uh, an a nail pricks uh, somewhere in the leg now due to the pricking of nail tissues of that area they get ruptured or they get injured now chemicals like histamine prostaglandins bradykinins are released at the site of injury now these are the sensory nerves now these chemicals activate these sensory nerve endings in the skin now these sensory nerve endings are called as nociceptors now these nerve endings they can be myelinated or they can be non myelinated so these nerve endings are called as nociceptors and non myelinated nerve endings are called as c fiber nociceptors so these chemicals stimulate c fiber nociceptors and these fibers are also called as first order neuron so this information that the pain is generated at the site of tissue injury is carried by these sensory nerves to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord now this is a section of the spinal cord this h shaped structure is a gray matter and the dorsal horn Uh, of the spinal cord is towards the back side of the spinal cord so these c fibers they propagate or they transmit information that the pain has been generated to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord now substance p is released by c fibers at the spinal synapse now this substance p it binds to neurokinin 1 receptors on the second order neuron now second order neuron passes this information to the thalamus uh, thalamus is a part of the brain now this information is carried to the thalamus by spinothalamic tract now this is followed by the stimulation of the third order neuron now this third order neuron carries information from the thalamus to the brain that is to the central nervous system and the pain is detected or it is felt in the somatosensory 
cortex of the brain. Thus, uh, substance P assists in the transmission of pain signal from the dorsal horn of the spinal cord to the central nervous system where the pain is perceived. Now, after uh, the perception of pain, now substance P is also responsible for producing neurogenic inflammation. Now, neuro refers to the neuron. So, inflammation that is produced by the neuron is called as a neurogenic inflammation. Now, as discussed earlier, Tissue injury causes sensitization of nerve endings. That means these sensory nerve endings, they get sensitized, they get activated, they get irritated or they can get inflamed. So these irritated or inflamed nerve endings, they release substance P at the site of injury. Now at the site of injury, they bind, bind to the blood vessels they bind to the neurokinin 1 receptors which are found on the blood vessels. This causes dilation of the blood vessels supplying that injured site. So this is a figure that shows the vasodilation. Now because of the vasodilation, the, uh, the spaces between the endothelial cells increases and this causes flow of fluid from the blood vessel to the adjoining tissues and this results in the inflammation. So this inflammation is produced by the nerves and therefore this inflammation is called as the neurogenic inflammation and this neurogenic inflammation is produced by the substance P. Now let's discuss each step of uh, neurogenic inflammation. Neurogenic inflammation is the inflammation that is produced or that is triggered by the activation of nerves. Now, uh, noxious, noxious or harmful agents like allergy, then sting or the bite of an insect or a mosquito, uh, then burns, infections, all these agents, they can produce injury to the tissues. Now, chemical substances like uh, histamine, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, bradykinins are released at the site of tissue injury. Now, these agents, they sensitize or they stimulate the uh, sensory nerve endings or the nociceptor. So, activation of these nerves causes release of substance P at the site of injury. Substance P binds to the neurokinin 1 receptors on the blood vessels and stimulate the release of nitric oxide from the endothelium. Now this nitric oxide which is released from the endothelium under the influence of substance P produces vasodilation. So as it is shown over here in the diagram, the Vasodilation is the increase in the diameter of the blood vessels. So, uh, this results in the vasodilation. Now, spaces between the endothelial cells, uh, they increase. So, uh, we can say that there is increase in the vascular permeability. Now, plasma from the blood vessel escapes into the tissues. So, this yellow color fluid here is the plasma. Now, this exudation of plasma leads to the accumulation of fluid in the adjoining tissues. And this accumulation of plasma results in edema or swelling. Swelling also causes tenderness and pain. Now, white blood cells or the immune cells, they also migrate from the blood vessel to the site of injury. Now, this results in the inflammation at the site of injury, which is termed as the neurogenic inflammation. Because this inflammation is mediated by the release of substance P by the irritated or the sensitized nerve. Now, this neurogenic inflammation is uh, very important in the pathogenesis of uh, diseases like migraine irritable bowel and the bladder syndrome. Uh, now the effect of substance P on the cardiovascular system. Uh, 
Now, as we have discussed earlier, substance P is a potent vasodilator. It dilates the blood vessels. It increases the diameter of blood vessels. Now, as seen during neurogenic inflammation, substance P induces release of nitric oxide by the endothelial cells and this nitric oxide actually produces the vasodilation. Now, effect of substance P on the respiratory system. Now, substance P induces or causes bronchoconstriction. So, the bronchial tubes, they become very narrow. Now, passage of air uh, through these bronchial tubes becomes very difficult. So, this causes difficulty in breathing. And hence, substance P is involved in the pathogenesis of diseases like asthma and chronic bronchitis. Now, role of uh, substance P in the gastrointestinal tract. Now, all of us know that in the gastrointestinal tract is present the enteric nervous system. Now, enteric motor neurons, enteric refers to GIT. So, enteric motor neuron of gastrointestinal tract release acetylcholine as well as substance P. Now, acetylcholine causes contraction of gastrointestinal smooth muscles. So, acetylcholine contract smooth muscles of gut. Now, substance P increases sensitivity of gastrointestinal smooth muscles to acetylcholine. That means smooth muscles of the gut, they become more sensitive to the action of acetylcholine. So, they contract more forcefully. So, substance P causes enhanced contraction of the smooth muscles of GIT. Now, in addition to this, chemotherapeutic agents which are used for the treatment of cancer like cisplatin, these agents release substance P. Now, this substance P which is released by chemotherapeutic agents binds to neurokinin 1 receptors located on area postrema and nucleus solitarius. Now, binding of substance P to these receptors present on area postrema and nucleus solitarius induces emesis that is causes vomiting. So, substance P induces vomiting by binding to its receptors on area postrema and nucleus solitarius. Now, neurokinin 1 antagonist, they block these receptors. They block the action of substance P on these receptors. So, neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist like apripetent reduce severity of chemotherapy chemotherapy induced vomiting. So, this agent that is the neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist, it is used as anti-emetic. Now, after uh, discussing pharmacology of uh, substance P, let's quickly go through the clinical significance of substance P. Now, as we know that substance P is a neuropeptide, it is involved in the perception of pain, it is a potent vasodilator, it produces neurogenic inflammation. It causes bronchoconstriction. Substance P has been involved in pathogenesis of diseases like eczema, psoriasis, asthma, chronic bronchitis, inflammatory bowel disease, migraine, rheumatoid arthritis, epilepsy, etc. Now, in addition to this, capsaicin. Capsaicin is a chemical that is found in the chilies, in the pepper. Capsaicin inhibits synthesis of substance P. And substance P is involved in the perception of pain. So, obviously, capsaicin provides relief from the pain. And therefore, capsaicin cream is used for pain relief in arthritis, then post-herpatic neuralgia, fibromyalgia, and peripheral neuropathy. So, this is in brief on pharmacology of substance P and its clinical significance. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.